Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zane, better known as the King Bahamut, and welcome back to Let's Play Donkey Kong Country for the Game Boy Advance. In the last episode, we got through the first three levels of Vine Valley. In this episode, we cross, we start to cross this uh, big old bridge here with crocodile statues on it for some reason, and tackle the level Orangutan Gang. This level kind of sucks if you're going for 100% completion because there are five bonus levels. So, real quick, uh, this is a steel keg. We saw these as early as the first level, but this is the f best, first best opportunity I have to actually show you what they do. You can ride them by bouncing them into a wall and jumping on top of them. They're pretty fun to use, but the mechanic is kind of not really explored very much. Also, I recommend bopping as many critters as you can find along the way because when we go over here, we get some clap traps and we get introduced to our next animal buddy. This is Espresso. He cannot attack, but he can walk over certain very small enemies and also, perhaps more importantly, you jump and press the A button repeatedly he can fly. And that's, or rather glide, I should say. Unfortunately, he cannot attack larger enemies like this guy here, Mankey Kong. Mankey Kong just sits in place and throws a bunch of barrels at you. But you can bop him on the head. And I actually want to dismount Espresso, Espresso here. And jump up over here and throw a barrel just barely slow enough to hit Mankey Kong and get a hidden camera from him. So, anyways, uh, progressing along and mistiming our jumps and falling down into the pits. Ugh. This level's going to be a trip, isn't it? Thankfully, if we go back to the, uh, go back to the checkpoint barrel, it spits us out right before or right after where we picked up Espresso, Espresso first. I'm going to keep calling him Espresso, aren't I? He's just gonna be a... He's just gonna be a coffee, isn't it? Which is hilarious because I don't drink coffee. I also apparently have no ability to judge spatial awareness because I just tumbled headlong into that pit, which I could have avoided by being like two inches to the right. Uh, honestly, Espr Espresso is probably my least favorite animal buddy, um, especially in this version of the game where Winky does not control like ass. But, it can be, I misthought where that was. I am remembering this level wrong, which is Honestly, not very surprising, because the it's not just that this level has five bonus areas to find, it's that they're also kind of in really weird and awkward locations. In fact, there's one that I am almost certainly not going to be getting on this first one, uh, because it does a weird thing where it puts you way too late in the level to make... the. The big problem with this level is that it's not just that it has five bonus areas, it's that there really isn't... The way that the level is structured, there really isn't a way to cleanly get 100% bonus areas in a single playthrough. Like, this is a level where you're kind of expected to go... You're kind of expected, almost expected to do two different playthroughs of it. And actually, I think I've already missed uh, another thing of bonus. Oh no, here we are. Never mind. There's two down here that are going to require us to maneuver barrels into. Uh, if I can remember the exact specifics of it. Anyways, we get the G from this bonus uh, area. We get 
put out back here. So we can take this barrel and move it into this wall. This is what I was thinking of when I accidentally ran to that pit way earlier. I couldn't remember where it was exactly. Okay. Now the last bonus area is much easier to get if you have Expresso with you. We jump over. Now you can go back and get the barrel, but it's much more entertaining to do things this way, assuming that you don't get hit by a critter jumping on you. Uh, yeah. Mankey Kong's barrels can open secrets for you. Not that the mechanic is used very much. Now, quick tip for flying with Expresso. Uh, don't hold the B button while you are flying with him. Just hit the A button repeatedly. I don't know if it's different in the original, but you will get much more distance if you just focus on hitting the A button repeatedly. But anyways, yeah, we're done the stage, but we didn't get all the bonus areas. And the good news is, is that the bonus area we missed is actually... is actually fairly early on in the level, so I probably could go back and get it, but I'm not going to do that because I set up a system where... I go back and get stuff that I missed later on, so that's what we're gonna do. Anyways, Clam City. Got another water level. And as you can expect from the name, there's a lot of clambos around here. Which is kind of a nuisance because we can't fight clambos with our friend on guard, who thankfully we get pretty early on in the level, but we also don't get any more on guards. Uh, there aren't any more unguard crates uh, lying around. So we have to keep this guy for as much of the level as we can. And if we get hit past the halfway barrel, we are kind of SOL for getting him back. So I'm going to try and play a little bit more carefully with unguard than I usually have been, than I did in the first water level. Assuming that I'm not getting stuck on coral. Thank you. I think if we can sneak past this guy, we can see that hidden camera right there. Oh, the section of the wall is a lot larger than I thought it was. Now, thankfully, the slowdown is here to help me maneuver around pearls being spit at me. We got Chomps Juniors. They typically don't hunt in packs, but these guys do, apparently. Knock these guys out. Get a halfway barrel for our troubles. Alright, maneuvering around at the speed of slowdown. Right through here, we have Chomps. Daddy Chomps. Take out these tiger sharks. Get an N for beating up sharks. Uh, not remember that there's a five spread pearl. We have Croctopus here that move in a tighter pattern than I was expecting. We have another five spread. Clambo? Ah, uh, that was not what I wanted to do. Oh my god, the slowdown. The emulator cannot handle this many sprites on screen. Alright, swim up. Let's get out of here. Holy woof, that was uh, a tenser ending than I was expecting, although I usually have that many problems with the end of that level. Anyways, Cranky's Cabin. Let's talk to Grandpa. Last time I saw you, you were wearing soggy diapers. The kids of today, they don't respect any of their elders. Perilous vultures know it's better being down to earth. Unguard swordfish will help you get right to the point. Gotta go now, I'll see you guys later if you're lucky. I always have fun doing Cranky Kong's voice. I have significantly less fun doing Candy Kong's voice because it sounds fucking terrible, but, uh, well, I have less fun listening to it, but it's fun to do. Bought some dance fun? Just jump in the barrel. Let's hop in the barrel. 
You keep coming back for more. Let's see if you can keep up with me this time. And this is where the music tracks for Candy's Dance Studio start getting good. That was pretty good, actually. Cool, you sure know how to hit the moves. Here you go, take this! Camera, a three-up. And on to the next level, Temple Tempest. Now, this one I remember having a couple of secrets that are a bit weird to find. I think that there's one point where there's a hidden camera. Oh, that is not a good omen for this level. That is not a good omen at all. Uh, let's grab that keggy. And we have to... I already messed up. I already messed up because I needed that barrel. I'm not even explaining the gimmick of this level just yet. Uh, let's go back and try that again. Or let's just slip off the ledge again. Man. I don't know what it is today, but I keep making really weird and kind of stupid decisions. Okay, gimmick of this level is that the Millstone Naughties are back, but this time they chase after you. Uh, unless you can off-screen them, which don't count on it, I would say. Anyways, we have a bonus barrel, a uh, bonus room right off the bat. Just bring that barrel over to the far wall and bop it. And your reward, jump on Neckies. And after jumping on seven in a row, we get a one-up. Three one-ups are always nice. And we get Espresso once again. Uh, which, honestly, Espresso is not that helpful in this world. Or this level, I should say. But then again, Espresso is very rarely helpful in any world that he's in. Which, honestly, I don't get why Espresso was not able to attack, because ostriches being related to things like cassowaries, they can kick pretty pretty fiercely, so you'd think that he'd at least be able to to do that, but nope. His scrawny legs can't bounce on enemies, but he can fly over this millstone naughty and get a hidden camera. And because we flew over the naughty, it means we can go through this section at our leisure, down arrow leads to an obvious bonus barrel. All right, now, can I do this a little bit better than I did the last time? Bounce on the Claptrap's head, get bunches of bananas. Every hundred bananas is worth a one-up, remember? But the Claptrap will move faster. You can roll into him from the back, but at some point he starts moving so fast that it's not really advisable. And we beat him up and get a Rambi token that I did not really want. It's okay, because it's the first one we've had in a while. Uh, now, over here. I actually need to dismount Espres Espresso yeah. for a second and bounce on a, a hidden item panel to get the end. Oh, slow down. Please do not... Please do not screw up my jumps. And we just basically fly over the rest of everything here. All the way up to the end. Jump up on this tire. How are we doing for letters? We still need to find the G. And I do not remember where the G is. Wow, I almost got Espresso. Oh no, I remember where the G is. Because it's stupid. You have to drop down off this rope in order to get it. 
But anyways, I believe that means we are done the stage. We are. All right. And with us being done with the final stage, it is time for the boss, Bumblebee Rumble. So before we start this boss, real quick, go to the center of the arena and get hit. That is not what I wanted to do. Uh, not the bees. Okay, so real quick, hit the boss with a barrel and go to the center of the room. Hand slap the ground and you get a hidden camera. The gimmick of this boss, this is Queen Bee. The gimmick of this boss is that you have to hit her with barrels, and every time you hit her with barrels, she will go invincible and surround herself with smaller zingers, which you then need to hit with barrels until she becomes vincible again. Now, while she's vincible, she will chase you around the arena, which is why I got hit. But, thankfully, she's also, you know, hittable. This is pretty much how you have to do things, is just repeatedly thump her with barrels. Now, a quick little tip for this boss is that you can kill at least a couple of zingers uh, by hitting them before hitting them while she's spawning them out of herself as a shield. And because the zingers will be all clustered together, you can potentially hit multiple of them, which is most helpful for this phase, where you have a wall of zingers, or you can just hit two of them at once. And with one final hit, Queen Bee goes down, and we get the next giant banana. Well, you told him to buzz off. You looked in trouble for a while. Come on, hand it over. I will take that banana for you. Make sure you wrap up warm. I have got a feeling you'll need to. There's some weird grammar in, in the dialogue of this game. All right, we beat the world, and we have moved on to a World 4 Gorilla Glacier. Uh, except not really, because there is uh, one level in Vine Valley that you may be able to tell I did not get everything in. And honestly, uh, we're probably better off going ahead and doing that real quick. So I will see you in just a sec to get that. And then in the next episode, we'll be off to World 4. This has been Zane, better known as the King Bahamut. And I will see you in the next episode of Let's Play Donkey Kong Country. Take care until then. At some point while playing through Orangutan Gang, I made a comment about how the stage is basically impossible to 100% complete in one run through. This bonus area that I missed is the reason why. It's not a hard bonus area to get through. All you have to do is that once you get Espresso, you have to backtrack to the beginning of the level and then once you reach a patch of solid ground, uh, right before the right after the first uh, tree and vine line, you want to jump off and fly all the way to the left. In the GBA version, there will also be a hidden camera along the way, uh, floating in midair right before the bonus room. The problem with this level, with this bonus area, is that it's not so much that it's hard to find, but once you complete it, it spits you out all the way towards the end of the level, like right before the last two or three bonus rooms. So you either have a choice of backtracking through the level to try and get an earlier bonus room, which is annoying, falling to your death and starting the level all over again, or you can do everything in the level and just go back for the early bonus room and get it after completing everything else, which is what I chose to do. It's kind of stupid, but to be honest, it's not too bad. It's just, I find it a little annoying that this is one of those levels where you basically can't do everything in a single go. Uh, at least not, at least not in an efficient way. But anyways, with that said, let's uh, take a look at our 
at the camera, what the cameras gave us for this episode. And I will see you next time for World 4. Take care.